So I started YouTube when I was about 26 years old and uh, not on this channel, um, on another channel, the previous one and probably old news to some of you watch like back on the Bushcraft channel. And I ran that channel for about nine or 10 years basically. It, it wasn't the only thing I did at the time. I, I started the channel and, and at that time when I started the channel I was actually working five days a week and I was living in Bristol. So I you know, had obviously pretty regular jobs up to that point. Um, I started the channel, I ran that for quite a few years and it grew and off the back of that um, I actually started like an apprentice job as a bushcraft instructor in the Forest of Dean and off that I reduced my hours in Bristol to about four days a week so I was doing four days a week in Bristol and then Friday, Saturday and Sunday I was working sort of voluntarily training to be a bushcraft instructor or trying to get into that, that world. Um, and eventually that happened. And then with the channel kind of growing, it started to earn revenue as, as channels do. You know, you know, you generally don't start a YouTube channel to earn loads of money. You start it because you're interested in something. You, you're trying to connect with other people out there in the world. Um, it's good for your mental health in the beginning. It can be very bad at the end, which I'll talk about my experiences personally. And um, you know, anyway, the channel grew, it earned money. I was working as instructor, that was paying me too. I was able to quit my nine to five. And then a long road really of, of working as an instructor and the channel growing. I started doing leather work and all in all, like it became like a, a business really, it, it worked. And uh, you know, I could earn a living from it. And, and I met my wife around the same time that I started the YouTube channel when I was about 27 years old. So, um, and she was actually the inspiration for me to start the channel. She was the one who was like, pick up a camera you know you, you know you enjoy doing that kind of thing you know on Pornhub and stuff but that was a joke but um sorry it's my British my dry British humor it's gonna happen a lot in this video okay um and uh you know just just yeah just start filming start doing something other than your nine to five because you're clearly very unhappy with it and back then YouTube was very different so it was kind of like about how many views you got because because back in the day when you created videos you you just made a video there wasn't sort of like this massive competition um, in terms of thumbnails and click-through rates and all this other sort of analytical data that they kind of like you measure your performance off of as, as a content creator if, if people liked your videos it, it would get views and the more views you got the more YouTube would be like hey look people like this video we're just gonna recommend it and they just infinitely then recommend the video forever and your channel would grow really well and I remember like I did this one video called solo five day bushcraft or something or it was like solo three day bushcraft and there weren't really any videos like that out at the time like using those keywords like solo hunting bushcraft and my channel just exploded because because there wasn't really a lot of stuff in the UK where people went out with a gun be it there's no wilderness in the UK but like what they deemed to, to be wilderness in the UK and like just living off of like shellfish and shooting pigeons and rabbits and just kind of like eating plants and sort of using your your kind of knowledge of the environment around you to, to basically just sustain yourself for however long you want to do that and from that my channel sort of exponentially grew and I think I got it to sort of near about 400k it's dropped off a lot now because it's not an active channel anymore so people unsubscribe understandably but um, in 2017 something happened on the platform where there was like a coca-cola advert that, that kind of came on. I, I shouldn't laugh, but you know, you, you've got to see the funny side of stuff in life. Um, and it came on to like a Ku Klux Klan video and Coca-Cola were like, no, nah, we don't support that. We're pulling out. And millions of advertisers pulled out of like YouTube and Google effectively and they lost loads and loads of money so they revamped the platform that's how the algorithm has now grown and the platform has completely changed so if you're starting a youtube channel um you could have the best videos in the world and and everything else but like for example if you had really bad titles and thumbnails it doesn't matter you'll just get buried so like you really like to succeed on the platform these days you really have to have everything in check you've got to have a really good thumbnail, a really good title, 
analytical data like potentially although it, it doesn't really amount up to that much and you know you've got to produce a good video the attention span of the audience is, is super important like if people click off the video if they skip through it you know the algorithm knows they're doing that and if a lot of people are doing that then it wasn't a good video and that'll be buried and thus for it can be quite a turbulent time for new content creators to come on the scene because it because it can be pretty unforgiving um, but like back back in 2018, after the platform changed, I went through like quite a transition in life. Um, and I guess I went into like a depression really, um, although I didn't really sort of communicate that. And, and it, it was a re really tough time. And then me and Megan decided to go traveling. You know, obviously I worked on the Jeep a lot. It was a very different animal back then, but we built it into like what we thought we needed for a long-term overland trip of living in the Jeep for anywhere to three to six months. And we went off around Europe. That trip around Europe was, was probably one of the best times of my life. Weirdly, I, I, when, when I even think about it, I almost feel a sense of loss because never in my life have I felt so free. Um, I, I guess I'd, I'd just been grinding it out for so long um, on Pornhub, obviously, uh, you know, with, with the other YouTube channel and, and like, you know, everything else, like the whole bushcraft thing for years and years, like courses and everything. And it was really intense. You know, I was studying all the time, studying botany and, and mycology and I was going out with, with like um, the Cotswold Mycology Group and like doing surveys and I was hunting and, and, and like practicing skills all the time and you know, you know, you, you sort of really needed to know the scientific name of absolutely everything because, you know, when you when you were on a course and somebody went, what mushroom was that? And you were like, oh, that's cl Clutterside Geotropa, you know, like the, the, the trooping funnel cap, for example, like you just immediately your credibility was reinforced like wow this guy knows what he's talking about i pick up on stuff pretty quick in terms of like you know when i'm in groups with dynamics or you know you can see when you're on a group like and, and you say i don't know what that is you know people are like mm, this guy doesn't really know a lot so there's always a lot of pressure as an instructor to sort of be like you know this kind of like jack of all trades really which is very unrealistic actually um i think that was created by by modern media like by by like the shows that came out where you saw one person like tackling the wild and knowing everything but if you went back into like you know the mesolithic period you, you had you had groups of people doing lots of different jobs like some people someone would be doing food other people would be hunting other people would be chewing animal hides and urinating on them and tanning them you know everyone did different jobs so so that idea i think is a very modern thing so i think going on that trip just made me feel completely free i was with my my wife megan at the time and we were waking up every day together in this rooftop tent with new stimulating views out of the window without a care in the world we we were traveling we were selling and, and making leather work whilst we were on the road and and life was ultimately like really not that expensive um you know because really all you needed was fuel and food and praying that your your jeep didn't break down which it actually didn't it didn't break down on that trip like it held out for when the trip was over <laughs> you know the point being was it was a really great break for me to sort of reflect on things but um but yeah we, we landed in sweden anyway and um, and like obviously decided to set up shop here and, and kind of like try and have a life here and that wasn't just off the bat i'd already been paid to come to sweden to this place back in 2016. there was a, a tourist company operating here called south destination lapland and they wanted me and megan to come here and like film for our mcq bushcraft youtube channel and like sort of promote tourism here i think the videos were a total flop and the communication was crap as well like I came here thinking a specific company was sponsoring me when actually it was a different company, but it wasn't really told to me at the time. So yeah, it, it was all it was all a bit weird really. But we had a great time here and, and you can't detract from, from the fact we were paid flights and accommodation to come here you know what i mean you can't be ungrateful for that you know, and, we, and it gave us that experience and that inspiration to actually move here and, and unregrettably here we are you know we've, we've been through some turbulent times like you know obviously i went through some real health issues which i still battle with now which can have quite an impact on life and 
and mental health. Like, you know, one of the reasons why I've been in this workshop for two months and not been out in the wilderness so much, like in the Jeep, and that you guys watching haven't really seen much of that content, it is because I was battling it out with my autoimmune disorder. And, and that isn't, I don't want sympathy. This video isn't like me going, oh, poor me, you know what I mean? I don't give a shit. You can keep your sympathy, right? I don't need it. Um, you know, what, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like trying to share some humility in, in, in my experiences with people out there so that perhaps other people can relate to it. Because that's kind of what this platform's becoming, I think. Anyway, going, going back to YouTube, because like I said, I've just totally gone off on a tangent here. I decided to start a new channel, which was this channel here, Workshop to Wilderness Adventure. I think it's just called Workshop to Wilderness now. I think it used to be called Workshop Wilderness Adventure, but that was a bit of a mouthful. And, and now it's, yeah, it's changed anyway. So I sort of learned from my mistakes and, and I kind of realized that actually, like the reality of being a full-time content creator in, in the climate that is YouTube today is a really horrible one, right? Really, we're in, a, we're in a time now in YouTube where the amount of subscribers you have, it's not that it doesn't mean anything and those people aren't valuable, that's not what I mean. What I mean is like the subscriber number isn't a reflection of being able to have a full-time job on YouTube. Like there are channels out there with millions of subscribers that get the same view count as channels with 10% of that subscriber number. You know, it's it's a very different platform now. A lot of channels that are starting now are prob probably finding it pretty difficult. And, it, and I guess it really depends on what you call a successful channel. I guess I could sit here and call my new channel, this channel I'm on now, successful. The view count is probably like quite pathetic in some people's eyes. To me, like it, it, it isn't. Like I actually think that you should be very grateful for what you have and not and not really look at the numbers so much. And that's something I learned from my last channel. You need to enjoy what you're doing, first and foremost. I mean, I know guys who run channels who are like upset that 50,000 people have watched their video and they're like depressed after they've put a video out because only 50K, 50,000 people have watched their video. That's a lot of people, right? But the problem is, is that 50,000 people doesn't equate to enough money from that video to, to really pay for the video and, and, and combined with everything else to the success and the growth of the channel. The thing is, it's good to have something in life that you enjoy, that you're putting your time into, that you feel like you're growing yourself. So like having that on the side of something you're doing alongside the channel it, it is quite good because what is the mental health implications of like having a YouTube channel? Um, like, is it good or is it bad? Like for me personally, I, I think it's a good thing. And I guess I'd have to be honest and ask myself why I do it. Because the reality is, is I don't need to do it actually. I could sack this in and I could, I mean, I've been offered jobs locally. I could just go and do a full-time job somewhere and just work every day and then not give a shit about the channel. Um, but, I, but I think that would be worse for my mental health, obviously. So what is it the channel, that is giving me that that is that is that's positive, and and I think that, like when I look at like my background and where I originate from, um, I started life as an illustrator, wanting to be an illustrator. So that's kind of what I studied um, in, in Bournemouth, like the Art Institute. You know, I was really into oil paintings and um, and still lifes and, and like drawing naked people. It's all adding up now, isn't it? Like I remember, like I was in one still life class and we had like a life model called Gary massive dick never seen anything like it um i remember remember i was sat i was sat at the back of the class once i can't remember the girl's name but she she was on the right of me just sort of sat forward a bit and she was just drawing his dick like it was gigantic like <laughs> like i remember i had a friend called adam howarth and like i think it was adam howarth like we were talking about after the life after the life drawing session but basically we were sat there and we're drawing Gary, like, and his, his massive cock. And, like, this one girl, this one redhead girl was right at the front of the class, like, maybe just, like, five metres away from him, like, just drawing him. <coughs> and, excuse me. And Adam was, like, looked across to this girl and was like, this is crazy, isn't it? Like, I, I can't remember what he said, but she looked at him. She's 19, right? She looked at him and went, have you never seen a man before? And then carried on, <laughs> carried on drawing, like... 
that earth shattering statement stuck with Adam, I think, for the entire time we were at university. It, it probably made him question his own setup down there. I mean, Gary was packing hardware we all dreamed of and we could only stand there and we were forced to draw it. And, and you know, it was, it was a wild experience. But as an artist, what you're looking for is feedback, right? You're doing a painting and you want feedback. Not necessarily positive feedback, because when I would do a presentation in class, I get I get my ass torn apart. Not literally, but whatever. So like you had to take the positive with the negative, and um, you know when you put your work in a gallery, people would be like, "Oh wow, like that's amazing, that's incredible, like nice work." So you get that that positive feedback, that dopamine hit, right? from those people giving you giving you like positivity and that would spur you on and it, you'd get, it was like you earned enough like dopamine from, from an exhibition to go away and do your next painting um, and, fi and find inspiration from that. And I think YouTube's the same. I, I think people are on YouTube for different reasons. And uh, for some people and some channels I've seen out there, you can clearly see that somebody is trying to fill a hole in their life they're missing something and and uh <coughs> i need to have a drink so yeah they're, they're missing something in life like that they're, they're clearly there's an insecurity or there's a void and and putting out videos and getting getting that feedback is 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 giving them something in life that they're missing um and that isn't a bad thing that that isn't a bad thing if you realize that that is what's happening I think it's a bad thing if you're unaware that, that you're missing something and that you're putting out videos and they're, and they're filling a, that hole for you. That can, that can, be, that can have negative implications because if you don't have that self-awareness of what that process is and you start getting negative feedback or your channel starts doing badly, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down on you hard because you, you're not aware really of why it's a good thing or, or why you're, you're getting that, what, what it's doing for you. So immediately when you start getting like negative feedback or criticism or your channel doesn't do well, because that is the way it goes. That's YouTube. It's a roller coaster up and down, up and down. You could be at the top of your game one minute, getting millions of views. And in a few months time, you could be getting like no views and earning no money. And that is just the way it is. It's all about trending and what it is at the time, like what comes up must come down you have to remember that if you start a channel um so like if 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 you're not self-aware enough going into that it can be very damaging for your mental health because you'll weigh it all on you per you'll take it personally you'll weigh it on yourself you'll be like there's something wrong with me but the reality is is like it, there isn't anything wrong with you it's that's that's just the, the road you've chosen and that is the nature of human beings and that is the nature of of entertainment. People's interests fluctuate, you know, as, as do mine. Sometimes I'm really into my fishing. This year I haven't done much of it because I just didn't feel like it. For me personally, I, I think that the reason I do it is is because I enjoy getting that feedback from people. I'm not going to lie. Like, why would I lie about that? That's a real thing. Like getting getting positive feedback from people based upon your work can apply anywhere. You could be a welder and you could you could you could be tig welding something up and your boss could go mate you've done a good job and you'll feel good from that you know so we're human beings at the end of the day so you know that is stupid to try and lie about that 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 is a real thing so of course when i get positive feedback on a video or, or on some work i've done i'm, I'm going to feel good about that and it's going to give me some form of energy um the other thing is is like I'm I'm quite a solitary character. I'm quite a lonely guy, basically. Um, and, and and like for me being on YouTube, it's like my way of connecting with other people out there in the world that have a similar interest and, and perspective on life and experiences that I have. And that is one thing I will say about Workshop to Wilderness that is much better than the Bushcraft YouTube channel. I feel like on this channel, like people bond together better it's almost like when you when when people see me like throwing my tools around and swearing they're like mate we've all been there don't worry about it like they're almost like supportive it's like we can all relate to each other 
that these jobs are shit and they're difficult and that building building the vehicle is hard and that, that all these mechanical problems that you face but ultimately when you get out there and you enjoy it and you use the vehicle it works and we're, we're all sort of happy for each other but nobody's like i don't ever see people in the comments section like picking holes and using knowledge as power and that is one thing i saw a lot on the bushcraft in the bushcraft space i think one error i made on mcq bushcraft was i never showed my humor like i, I ran it like a teacher and if i could go back in time i, I would i wouldn't do that as much on that channel and it, there were some real messed up weird people on it on that channel i even had people come to my house uh, and like threats and everything on that channel. Like it was really weird. Like there was some, some, I think the problem is, is like people watch the channel and they were living vicariously through me doing the bushcraft rather than going out and doing it themselves. Like people would get sort of like angry when I didn't put a video out because they didn't get their like fix from, from that. And it, and it was all a bit, bit weird. But I think on this channel, it isn't like that. It's not like that at all. Like people on there are just living their life and, and you know, and they're, they're, they're sort of looking at me doing this stuff and making mistakes and they're taking some inspiration for it, but they're also giving me advice too. learn from your mistakes, show your mistakes, like humility, accountability. These are, these are all the positive things I think that we should all be sharing. Like that, that's, that's one of the major positives that I feel from being on YouTube now and doing this channel is that it's it's like, it's more of a collective experience. Even though I'm the one filming and you're watching me being a twat, it's still a collective experience. You know what I mean? Um, it's still, it. I, th I think it's, I think it's, you know, it can be, I, I guess it's like social media can be a really positive thing depending on how you go into it. So like why you'd want to start YouTube, I, th I think it's a great question to ask yourself because it'll ultimately lead to you understanding your direction better of, of, of why you do it. Um, I think I think as well, a, a big a big issue would be like not like I, I'd advise you just don't worry about criticism. Like criticism isn't a bad thing. Um, you know, that there will be shitty comments like people will write like, um, oh, you're a twat and I don't like you, but that, that's fine. Like you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? Like if somebody writes on my channel, like, I think your Jeep's a bag of shit and you've done a, a terrible job on it and, and I would do a better job. Um, like, okay, well, fine. You know, that's great. I'm really happy for you that you can do that. But you know what? That doesn't actually really like have any effect on my life. You know, like I'm happy for you that you are a better craftsman than me which isn't difficult to obtain. There are loads of people out there doing better work than me. It's nothing new, um, you know, but, but what my point is, is don't get hung up on that. Don't remember that as, as like the feedback you got from that video, like take the positives, like interact with the people who, you know, who are enjoying your content and are getting something from it or are giving you some advice or some feedback or something else, right? But anyway, I'm, I'm going off on really like the, the psychology of like, content creators and like what works for them and and i wanted to make this video really just to touch on um on some aspects of that you know i'm not going to put this video out on a sunday because i just don't think it's regular content like I, I quite enjoyed doing these kind of like q a sit down and talks and this and this video like a lot of these talking videos came from a question in my instagram um, and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna reveal the question or the content creator because you know, I don't, I don't want to bring attention to them. Um, but, but, you know, I just thought it was a really interesting topic and it is something that, that some of us content creators talk about. In fact, I talk about this with somebody on a weekly basis, almost sometimes like we, we exchange dialogue about, about sort of like, um, you know, the way things are moving forward and like, and like kind of the stability of like the mental health behind it, you know, because it, because it is actually, I think quite an epidemic in some way with, with some people like, um, you know, I think, I think it can be a major problem. My advice to people who are, who, who are starting channels would, would be just to, um, not to film everything you do. It's a really bad move. Don't film everything you do. Um, there are lots of jobs that I do on the vehicle that I don't film. There are lots of camps and outings I do that I don't film. You have to have a balance. Always stop work every day at a certain time. Like I stop work every day at four o'clock. Like that's when I stop work and my son comes, you know, I pick my son up and then we play and it's, and it's dad and, and Max and we're doing stuff together. We're going on bike rides, whatever. We're building castles. 
out of blocks, you know, and dinosaurs are attacking it. That that's that's it, you know. Like that is what you've got to do. Don't take the channel so seriously that that it's like fucking up your home life. Like I see a lot of content creators out there talking about working hundred hour weeks and that they never spend time with their family and friends and they've lost their social life. If you're doing that, you fucked up. You've lost the eye. That's not what this is about. Like when you're building a YouTube channel, you're not building anything at all. You have to realize that. You're building a business on someone else's back garden and they can change the rules whenever they want. It's happened to me. I was I had a successful channel. Everything changed in 2017. All my hunting content got demonetized, lost like 80% of my earnings, everything went to shit, channel changed, everything changed. Right, it can happen in the flick of you know, the flick of a finger like Thanos. He just does that and the channel's over, right? You know. You shouldn't really be thinking you're anything special when you're on here. You're no you're no better than your fellow man. Maybe you're just good at talking like me. And that's your, you know, and that's your claim to fame or whatever. You know, you can talk some shit, and that's great. You know, but but you shouldn't be like rising yourself above, being. You know, if you if you are an authority in something and you do have a great deal of experience, then then share it with people. But you should always remain humble on that. You know, you shouldn't let it get to your head. Like you see, a lot of content creation getting to people's heads, and they're making claims and they're hot and they're on their pedestal and talking to people and reacting neg negatively to feedback and comments that they don't like. If you're doing that, I think I think you've already screwed up. Um, you know, and people will sense that and you will you will start to be disliked because those are dislikable traits as a human being. Yeah, just just don't push yourself to a deadline to make videos every week. I miss some Sundays. You shouldn't be stressing about creating content. It should be fun. It should be fun, basically. It's going to be it should be a fun thing that you're doing. You should be enjoying it, yeah, because you can't forget why you start, why you why you do these hobbies in the first place, because you can wreck them really easily if you film everything. You have to have decompression. For me, working on my Jeep, it's about decompression. Going out car camping and hiking and fishing and like giving Bigfoot like a reach around for me is decompression. It's important, all right? And he better have shaved. All right, I'm just not going to have any of it this time. Not gonna have it. <sighs> Dirty bastard. Anyway, look. I, I mean, like, this is a bit of a ranty video. It's a super long one. I, I really just wanted to to sort of make this video based upon that question I got on Instagram. I, I hope that answered your question for for the gentleman who who we were talking about this at great length to. Um, you know, and uh, you know, and and I hope I hope you find what you're looking for. You know, in terms of like happiness in life and that work life balance and. For regular content viewers, um, if you're wondering why there's not been a lot of ca camping content recently, obviously uh, we just had a baby, and like I said, you know, like I, I had some real serious problems, which I, I'm getting to the end of now. I'm starting to kind of get back to feeling like me again, uh, which is really nice. And um, yeah, next week I, I'm I've got some time. I'm getting out for my first camp in the bed platform. I'm very excited to sleep in the truck. Um, now I've taken some steps for condensation. I have got a little fan over there. I'm going to be building, I'm going to be knocking out the rear window on the hatch, putting an aluminium plate there, wrapped aligning it. Probably going to have a, a photo of Steven Seagal and Jean-Claude Van Damme, um, either side. And then maybe Hulk Hogan, like just fucking blasting him out, like away from his chest, like in the middle. You know, sort of like morale, every, you know, and then Bigfoot's like charging in like that with a massive semi just coming in hot like Sir Lancelot. And like Hogan's just spotting him at the corner of his eye, like as he's blasting Van Dan and Seagal away, he's just like, fuck, you know. So that's going to be on the inside of the rear window. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to make that fan on the back of that rear window uh, to get some like air extraction shit going in the vehicle because i think condensation this winter is going to be a savage problem for me sleeping in the truck and uh and basically you know i need i need to kind of get on that really and, and figure that out so if you've got any tips for me please please help me out like i've seen these bags you can get on amazon that you put in there and they absorb moisture and you put them in the microwave you dry them out you sniff them you you <sighs> yeah it takes you back to when you were 15 and you're in the bathtub, whatever. But 
you know, like, you know, so whatever. So like, if you've got any tips for me, let me know and, and I'll sort of sort that out. You know, maybe I can buy those things. I was worried that they'd release fumes because I remember silica gel that you put on the windowsill released fumes. So I don't really know what's in that bag. Like, is it, if it's silica gel, then, then it will release something, won't it? I don't know. I'll have to look at it online. But, you know, any, any advice you guys have got out there, you know you can always throw it my way. I'll take your advice. I'll make it my own. I'll make a video and I'll delete your comment. And that's how I roll, really. Um, that's how we roll. It's, it's YouTube. Oh, the light died. Yeah, I got the light battery going again. It just unplugged for some reason. Um, it was it's probably just saying, mate, this video has been long enough. For God's sake, end it now. But anyway, I'm very excited to get out. Um, obviously, like we do have a new baby and stuff. But but like I said, my channel is kind of like something I do for 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 work. And I've got I've just got a couple of days. So I'm going to get away and and um, you know just 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 for a night. It's just going to be one nighter. You know, locally, um, make a fire all that sort of stuff. Bigfoot misses me. Um, he's been, you know, I hear his howls at night. You know, sort of he's, he's upset. All right. So, you know, he won't be, I'm in the car now. So I'm going to lock the doors, mate. Sorry. Look, but don't touch. Like he's going to be looking through the windows like that. He's going to be looking through the window like that. You know, you can't see. <laughs> I'm ending this video here. Look, I hope this video helped you out. It was a bit of a random one. And uh, thanks for watching. And, um, you know, take care of yourselves out there. Um, you know, and uh, if you're ever feeling feeling down, you know, if you're feeling depressed, um, just know that you're not alone in the world. You know, we, we live in turbulent times and um, we're all in it together. And, uh, you know, stay strong. And, um, you know, positive mental attitude. You know, positive mental attitude. Focus on the mini wins of the day and, um, you know, just, just, just don't focus on the negatives and, and just try and shit advice. I'm really sorry. Look, I'll see you next time.